For the past month, I've been building an exercise watch that uses artificial intelligence, sensors, and some questionable electronics. So let's flash back to the very start, one month ago. Exercise, a foreign concept to some, but to others, a way of life. That's of course you and me. Over the years, companies have found numerous ways to capitalize on people's desire to not be constantly cosplaying as a potato. We've got treadmills, elevation stairs, and even floating bicycles. All very expensive, all very big. But then, you see, some companies, they had a little light bulb moment. What if, instead of using these big, bulky things to emulate exercise, we just get people to, you know, use their legs? So they made these exercise watches, which have an ability to remind you about how lazy you're being by politely reminding you about all sorts of things. I mean, really, look at all these stats from all these major brands, but there is a clear gap in this market. None of these watches, so-called smart watches, have personalities, artificial personalities. So how are we gonna go about this? Well, it's best to ask the questions of what do we want the watch to do, measure, reveal about ourselves. Off this big list from before, we're gonna take three and we'll start with a heart rate monitor. Typically our resting heart rate sits between 60 and 100 beats per minute. When I tested it on myself, I found that I sat between 75 and 80 beats per minute. I don't really know what that tells me about myself, but those are the numbers we're gonna be working with. We're gonna use this hunk of metal that I soldered to track the heart rate of the user. It's a max 30102 chip although it's probably just a clone of one because this is apparently what they really look like. The sensor works using photoplicethomyography. That is the last time I will use that word in this video and probably ever. Essentially, when the sensor is on, it's shining two lights. The first light is a red light that we can obviously see, and the second light is an infrared light, which is a little bit more camera shy. The photo detector then measures the amount of light absorbed, which shares a relationship to the volume of blood in the body part that we were looking at. So I'm looking at my wrist or my finger, any bit that's transparent enough to allow the light to pass through. Then using some funky maps in this code, ha ha ha, code is so thrilling to look at, we can find the average beats per minute just over a shorter time frame because we don't want one reading every minute. I mean, come on, that's ridiculous. We're gonna test the sensor and code working together by doing a monstrous amount of push-ups. <clears throat> 30. Now, my room's not very big, so I'm gonna have to do these diagonally. Uh, we should see an elevated heart rate since my body needs more oxygen to power my massive muscles for the more push-ups we do, and we do. Success. With the beating of my heart suitably tracked, it's time to get some more functionality. I'm gonna go for <clears throat> altitude monitoring. Sounds easy enough. Liar. To do this, we're gonna consider pressure. Not this type of pressure, although I do know all too well what that feels like, this sort of pressure. But Robotkiss, that's a blank sky, you say. <laughs> look a bit closer, a little bit closer. Oh wow, look at that dot that I definitely didn't just edit in. And that one, and that one too. Those dots, they're what make up our atmosphere. Tiny microparticles, invisible to most humans, I'm sure. They are what allow us to live breathe, exist when you really think about it. But they also cause pressure on objects. You, me, this sensor, which is called a barometer. The sensor picks up the same pressure as you and me despite its smaller surface area because pressure distributes. That means if I'm down here at the bottom of this slope, the atmospheric pressure is lower, this slope to be exact. And once I ever so slowly make my way up this slope, that atmospheric pressure gradually decreases, which in the code we can classify as a change in height or altitude. It should really work the opposite way too, but in this specific case here, it was pretty windy. Look at those trees swaying. And that wind meant the sensor normalized around the wrong initial atmospheric pressure. Over a longer time, that effect will probably become negligible, but on a short slope like this, it really screwed up the readings. Also, let this clip be proof that despite building robots in my room for the last year, I have indeed touched grass. Success. As I did that climb, I collected the altitude data in this CSV file and I made a little elevation map. 
it's not that accurate because of what I said a second ago, but there is like some generic trends here, but clearly we need a bigger hill. Bigger hill. For this test, I'll be starting down here. My friend's gonna be standing here with his phone, and I'll be going up all the way up here. I'm also going to be wearing his garment, so we can compare my sensor to the slightly more expensive setup. The watch is not focusing. Yeah, good enough. I've got some suitably epic music, and I'm going to have way too much fun in my editor with this. So let's get climbing! Alright, data time! So, we have this elevation chart from the Garmin. Now for this video, we're just going to assume the multi-million dollar company's creation, which the Garmin is in fact accurate. We're getting a generic upwards trend, which is exactly what we would expect. It's accurate enough you can even see the slight differences in the rate we're climbing at. So here, for example, it's slightly slower, which coincides with the road intersection, where it's a bit less steep. And here's our data collected on our sensor, and it's pretty good. Our sensor measured a total altitude difference of 20 meters, whereas the Garmin was closer to 18 meters. But even on our sensor, those same slower rates of climbing could be detected. Arguably, our sensor was even better at catching slowing rates because it caught when I stopped once or twice because I failed at the recording. You donkey. So we got heart rate and height. This one gives us a good indication of just how hard we might be exercising, and this one what type of exercise we might be doing. But they don't give us an idea of quantity of exercise. And that is where our final sensor comes in, an accelerometer. We're gonna use this to measure steps. When we walk, our bodies, but especially our arms, naturally swing a little bit, especially if you have freakishly long arms like me. I mean, look at these things, I'm almost touching my knee! <coughs> Anyways, these accelerometers, they have a frame of reference, and when I attach it to my wrist, I'm just gonna be loosely holding it for now, and then move my arm, the frame's orientation changes. Say this position is the default, when the arm swings forward, we're gonna get a noticeable change in our accelerometer reading, and we'll categorize that as a step. Truth be told, I am exaggerating the arm swing a little bit here, even just the general movement of the body is going to register a step the way I've written the code, but we don't want to make it so sensitive, otherwise we'll just detect everything as a step. I've developed an app to act as that interface for us to display the step information that isn't just a big black terminal. The nice thing as well about steps is they actually can be derived into a lot of other information. For each step, we're moving about one meter. If you started to run, that distance might get smaller or bigger, and it also depends on how you're built, but we'll just assume one meter goes for everything because I'm all about inclusion. That means we can actually just get distance covered by just chucking a meter on the step value, which was very hard to code, I promise. Then when we start to factor in something like weight, we can even get a good idea of just how many calories we're burning. I've gone on a quick walk just to test the steps function and I was counting the steps as I was going along. It's worth noting for this test, there was an initial offset of 10 steps because I just was stepping around while I was setting up the recording. So the final step count should really have a 10 taken away from it to be accurate. Also, I didn't realize it when I was walking, but just looking back at that calorie value, it's way too big. We're just calculating that based off distance and weight, so there's just a messed up equation somewhere. So it's a pretty simple fix. I'll deal with it later. While walking, I counted 82 steps and the app counted 95. Once we take the offset of 10 off, we end up with 85, which is actually only 3 off, so not bad. I wonder if maybe we counted a few more steps because of this part of the walk which had me going down 
some stairs. Even then, it's only offset by a small amount, so pretty good. Success. To make our artificial personality, we're going to use a large language model, or LLM, which Brilliant's going to help me to explain. I've worked through Brilliant's LLM course myself, so I'm not just yapping, and I really liked how they went about explaining something called tokenization. Essentially, if you've ever typed a prompt into something like ChatGBT, then that sentence was split up into little individual sections that help the LLM to understand exactly the tone of what you're saying. This allows your LLM and our artificial personality to have a real flair. Learning about LLMs, maths, data analysis, or even programming normally involves a lot of theory, and Brilliant has that, but it also supports everything with interactive lessons. It's nice because it keeps things fresh, and if you're anything like me, actually allows you to learn things. Naturally, to try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash robotkiss, or just use this QR code or even the link in the description and you'll even get 20% off an annual subscription. Very nice. I set up the watch to utilize some of ChatGBT's legacy models by going onto OpenAI and just integrating their code snippets into my app's code. The way our system works is to send prompts about exercise progress to our large language model or GBT4. Basically I'll just start moving this accelerometer, the steps should take up and then eventually we should get a positive message initially. Loading. Keep pushing. You're getting stronger every day. You got this. It's so nice. And if it deems it to not be acceptable, then it might give you a little bit of a, an insult. Stop being lazy and start moving, you pathetic weakling. Wah. I've also thrown together this three printed design of the watch. Firstly, I had to deal with this mumbo jumbo of wires. Each of these sensors had four connections that needed to be hard soldered. So I connected everything via these perf boards I cut out to get any form of signal. Each of these sections has their own little slot and they just fit in via friction. Then for the actual wrist attachment, I've made this frankly horrible thing that definitely doesn't out scratch you when you put it on. Truly one of my most innovative designs. <laughs> but you can't argue with the results. It allows our watch, screen and all to fit nicely on the wrist. And if you want to tighten it, just bring it further up your forearm where you hopefully have bigger muscles. For our final test of the whole system, we're going to start here, the midsection of the hill we walked up earlier. Once we go up the hill, we then get to this flat bit where we will continue along. I'll be looking for the watch to send me progress reports, encouragement, etc, etc, through the LLM, through the whole walk. So let's get walking. The LLM initially sent an encouraging message at the beginning of the walk. You've got this, push yourself and reach your goals. Very nice. As I climbed, the LLM fed us more encouragement. You're halfway there, keep pushing, reach the top. I'm almost there. As I continued, I definitely didn't start to feel the incline. Oh. Oh. But the LLM helped me through. Don't stop now, push harder for the results you deserve. I eventually got to the top of the hill and continued to the end. And after my intense workout, my LLM roasted me. Pick up the pace. That was painfully slow. So I, like the mature individual I am, definitely didn't overreact. Useless. Oh no. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest. The plan was not for this part of the watch to snap, sending my exposed electronics into this wet bush. So uh, hopefully you guys don't want a part two. Ooh, subscribe.